And our topic today is financial podcasts for you and or your students. We're going to be reviewing a whole host of different podcasts today. This was probably, it's like any class or um, a session that you want to do where you feel like you've got so many different things that you want to cover and you have such a short amount of time and then you're having to pick and choose. Um, this is one of those where I really felt challenged in some ways because um, I really wanted to do some, I, I wanted to like you know, talk about all of them. And I kind of had to pick some of my favorites, even though I had to sort of put some of my other favorites to the side. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm just going to say that, you know, these are some of the ones that I like. Everybody has something different. Um, and obviously, these are my personal opinions. They don't necessarily reflect the opinions of Penn State University or the Pennsylvania Department of Education. So um, these aren't endorsed by either of those entities. You're just getting my opinion on these different podcasts and how you can use them either for yourself or uh, for your students. So with that said, um, we are going to cover a couple of different topics, ways to use these as financial edu educators. I'm going to highlight some great financial podcasts, and we'll talk about ways that you can get the most from a podcast assignment if you are using them in school. So um, rather than just go through a long list and give you example after example after example, I thought it might be more interesting to approach it from the different ways that you might use these podcasts. And so I kind of... Um, a, a number of these could easily have fit into more than one category, uh, but I broke them down so that you could kind of think about, oh, well, yeah, that's another way I could use a podcast, right? So as opposed to um, just giving you a laundry list and talking about, you know, what I like about different ones and how they might be used. So we're going to break this down um, and go through a whole different host of different ways to use the, uh, these podcasts. Um, those of you who have been on our webinars before know that I like to try and give a handout so that you don't have to take too many notes um, or try and um, Google everything at the end. Um, so uh, Fred LaPointe is on with me and assisting me today. Fred, if you can go ahead and copy and paste the link to the handout. It's a Google Doc that has um, all of the links that you should need throughout the, the session. It has all of the, the podcasts. Um, I did do things a little bit differently. So the featured podcasts are at the end, but you'll see information there um, on each of those. And before I uh, move forward, just so I don't forget, with all of those featured podcasts, I've tried to link you to the original source. Um, it's kind of like when you link to an app, right? There's people who are, say, maybe uh, Apple users and Android users. And so when we do that, we could like link to the iOS version and, and the Android you know, version or the, you know, the Apple store and the Google Play store. Um, I did not link to specifically where you would find these podcasts because we use so many different podcast um, ways to access podcasts. So um, if you use Spotify, for example, or you use Apple Podcasts, you're going to locate these in different ways. Um, and there's so many different options, which we are going to talk about at the end of the session today if we have time. But I just wanted to mention that I've, I've sent you to the sort of source location. And from there, you can um, access these. Or the other way is to just wherever you access your podcasts, type in the name of them and find them. So uh, I just wanted to to mention that just in case uh, you're, you're kind of questioning, well, how do I get to that and how do I actually access these? And again, we're going to talk a little bit about that um, as we go through. So number one way to use a podcast as a financial educator is to better understand a topic. So um, if you can find that little raise your hand feature, I'm going to ask you guys this question. Um, raise your hand if when everything that was going on with GameStop, you felt 100% confident that you knew how to teach this. You didn't need any help. You didn't need to read anything. You didn't need to like study up. So raise your hand if you are 100% confident. And I'm going to go ahead and put my hand down because I got to tell you, I, I personally wasn't 100% confident. So I'm not seeing a whole lot of hands going up. So that's an example of one of those times where it can be incredibly useful to do some homework on a topic, to better understand a topic, especially when it's current events. I found myself every single day <laughs> listening to at least one or two podcasts on the topic just to try and dig in and get a little bit more information. I am very much an auditory learner. 
I appreciate learning in that format. And I knew that some of my trusted sources of financial podcasts would be talking about this and would be a great resource for me. So this is a way that you as an educator can get up to speed on a topic. Say, for example, it's something new and evolving and, you know, like the whole GameStop stock um, and Robin Hood and everything that was going on with that, where we all kind of needed to get up to speed on something, right? Or maybe it's just a complex topic that you haven't taught before, or you haven't taught in a while, or you think maybe something has changed, and you want to just make sure that you're understanding it um, and that you understand it so that you can in turn teach it to your students. Maybe something on cryptocurrency, for example, things that are new and, and evolving. Um, perhaps it's not you who needs to better understand a topic, but it's your students who need to better understand the topic. And so you can use a podcast as a way to provide some of that in-depth um, instruction, freeing your time up to focus on the discussion. So a lot of you I know are teaching in virtual environments um, and sometimes it's you know, synchronous or asynchronous, or maybe you have some students some of the time and some of them in class other parts of the time. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can think about this, or even those of you who have in the past um, done what we call you know, flipping your classroom, where you have the students sort of learn about a topic in advance, come to class prepared with that information um, and ready for a discussion. So um, these can be in particular when things are complicated. So, you know, a topic like we were talking about earlier with the whole GameStop, complicated situation, right? Or trying to understand what was going on there. Maybe it's things where there's a lot of nuance and you want to maybe um, get some different perspectives on things, um, something new or changing. So things that, you know, maybe there's something new every day and you don't have time to go out there and do all the research yourself. You know, you can trust some of these vetted resources um, to do some of that homework for you and get you up to date. So um, again, a, a, the GameStop, perfect example. So here is one of my favorite um, uh, uh, podcasts called Planet Money. So this is probably one that if you have um, done anything with financial podcasts, this is one of those ones that's oftentimes one of the top rated uh, personal finance podcasts. Um, I have in all of these given you sort of just a really quick little overview, some examples of some of the recent topics so you can kind of get an idea of what um, they, they talk about, where this is from, the average length. Now I will tell you the Planet Money ones can be a little bit across the board in this. Um, and then, like I said before, a link on where you can find those and where you can access those. One of the great things about the, the um, uh, the podcast from NPR, um, they have what they call NPR One. All of the podcasts from NPR can be played and or downloaded from their uh, from their website. So that's fantastic. You don't have to go anywhere else in order to access or use these. Um, so very, very easily accessible, or you can download them and then put them into someplace like Google Classroom. So um, lots of flexibility. And as you think about where you want to access your podcasts, um, you know, one of the things obviously you're going to take into consideration is what access students will have and what devices they may or may not have access to, what apps may or may not be available to them, et cetera. So thinking about how you'll access them is something that you want to want to do. Um, I personally, for whatever <laughs> it's worth, I listen to most of them. I subscribe on my phone. Um, I use Spotify for the most part. My kids got me into that, and that was a gift we gave to them was the Spotify premium um, for Christmas for, for the family. So I'm able to download those when I don't have great internet connections, um, and I listen to those um, quite frequently in the car, or, um, in the house, through our Alexa devices. We're all connected um, and uh find different ways that I can try and, and sneak those in sometimes. So Planet Money, it's great, you know, if you're a listener, um, long-time listener, first-time caller, what have you, to, to NPR, um, you are probably familiar with some of these and their approach. Um, it's very much sort of that radio show um, style where they're going in, they're talking to different people, they're interviewing very um, a variety of folks. It's very conversational, very um, approachable, I would say, for the average individual. So they're not trying to talk over anybody's head. They're, you know, it's very much a news story um, type of focus. Also from NPR and from the makers of Planet Money is one called um, The Indicator. 
And so uh, these are separate ones. These are a little bit shorter in length, about 10 minutes. And so again, you can find all of these online. Um, I love, you know, and sometimes there's these little things that you can, um, like this one was the, the Beji Awards. This uh, was a, a great story, um, a great podcast where they talked about um, stories that come out in the Beige books from the Federal Reserve. So there's like little snippets that you can kind of learn about in, in different ways. Um, and in this case, um, talking about businesses that have done well in the podcast, in particular, those that focus on um, pets, because lots more people are buying um, or and adopting pets um, as they've been at home. So um, lots of different sort of fascinating up to the minute kinds of explanatory um, podcasts on the indicator. Another one is um, called You Need a Budget. This one is from the folks that um, have the You Need a Budget app. And they are focused on sort of their system, if you will, of, um, of uh, budgeting, right? And so it approaches things from that perspective, but they talk about all sorts of different um, topics. So like optimizing your car budget, here's the ideal budget. So talking about like, what's the ideal? Um, budgeting your technology. So that one is a, somebody that comes on and, and talks and is kind of like an expert. These are all over the place in terms of the time. So when you look at these, you know, you can find some that are five minute segments and some of them that are as long as an hour. They're not quite as, um, as reliable in terms of um, how long each one of those um, will be. Um, current events. So this kind of goes hand in hand with that whole notion of what was going on um, or has been going on and is still going on with GameStop and what have you. Um, but current events, um, a lot of times, you know, if you're trying to have students engage with things that are happening in the moment, um, you know, there's different places that you can go, but podcasts are a great way to embed those and talk about what is going on right now. And so um, you can look at, you know, again, you know, some of these really um, uh, relevant ones. One of my favorite ones, and this kind of gets into an interesting piece, I've got a slide on it a little bit later, but um, maybe talk about it a little bit here now as well, is called Snacks Daily. So um, has anybody heard of this podcast? Raise your hand or comment um, if you have ever listened to either the Snacks Daily or Snacks uh, Minute podcast. Snacks Minute is only available on, um, on Spotify. They also have um, a, uh, a newsletter, uh, like an electronic emailed newsletter. So this one is um, fantastic. Uh, it's actually probably one of my personal favorites. Um, it focuses a, a fair amount more on companies and investing um, than it does just on the overall financial, um, you know, on personal finances. It, this one definitely leans more towards investing um, on that side. But it's really fun. It is, um, they're about 15, 20 minutes on average. They're done every single weekday. Um, and you can listen either to that 15 to 20 minute version um, or to that three minute version. And on all of them, they have sort of the same focus almost every um, time. They usually do like three different segments. And I think that it's really interesting, especially when they talk about the different companies and what things are going on. And so, um, you know, just the other day they were talking about the new, um, the new title that Elon Musk um, has at uh, at Tesla. Um, I'm trying to remember what it was. Techno was it Techno King? Um, anyhow, they make it really funny. Um, they're both. It's hosted by two young guys that were roommates. Um, they both spent time working on Wall Street. Um, it's an interesting backstory, by the way, because these guys um, created this podcast a good number of years ago, and then they were acquired by Robin Hood. And so this one was fascinating because I was, I'd been listening to them beforehand, but listening to them explain everything that was going on with GameStop. And they broke their own rule, which is never talk about Robin Hood because they don't want to like, you know, make it look like they're talking about the folks that sponsor them. But you can't really talk about what was going on with GameStop without talking about Robin Hood. <laughs> so they had to sort of break that rule for a little bit. Um, but it's really good. I also absolutely happen to adore um, in the intro of their uh, podcast, they have this sort of rap style 
um, introduction where they have this disclaimer. Um, my household is a big or huge fans of Hamilton. So the beginning of it sounds a lot like a track from Hamilton. Um, so anyhow, uh, if you have one podcast that you want to try tonight, um, maybe if you are going to you know, have 15 or 20 minutes later and you want to try one podcast from the ones that we've talked about, um, start here. Start start with this one because they're quick and they're short and again, sort of bite-sized. Um, hence the reason that they're called snacks. <laughs> so, uh, so anyhow, listen to whatever the one is. I haven't listened to today's. I don't know what it was, um, but you can listen to them and you can get caught up on a few days um, in a short period of time. But um, that's, again, you know, some of the challenges of these is trying to figure out, you know, which ones to focus on. And that, that definitely is one of my favorites. Okay, so the other option is, you know, a lot of us like to have guest speakers um, or take um, and look at things from the perspective of some of the quote unquote industry experts. And so when we think about experts, you know, almost like a guest speaker um, and being able to bring them into the classroom or get their perspective on different things. And so um, there's a couple of different ones that are here as options. So Life Kit um, Money. So there's Life Kit and Life Kit Money, um, which are both a little bit different, but Life Kit um, and Life Kit Money each come from NPR and they have a variety of different um, uh, different episodes that you can listen to on different topics, and they all interview various experts. So they get the opinions of different experts and um, on these different topics. I'm going to share with you a little bit later a, um, uh, a make your own or a DIY version or an example of something that you can do with students after they have watched a podcast. And that one in particular is on this Life Kit Money one from, called Side Gigs or Demanding. Here's how to make one work. So that is the source of that. Um, and I wanted to show you, if you go to the NPR website, like I was talking about earlier, and you go to one of these specific um, podcast episodes, so it's kind of a podcast, if you're not familiar, are kind of like television shows. So you might have like a series, and then you might have specific different episodes. Um, and you might just like other things, there's, you know, the life kit, for example, there's life kit ones that are on other topics. And then there's ones that are just on the, the money so it's sort of interesting to try and sort of navigate those. But um, again, you can go on and, um, and listen to them right there. So if you hit play, if you go other places on their website, it'll continue to play up here in the right-hand corner. You can add to playlists. So for example, if you wanted to go through and say, oh yeah, I wanna to listen to that one, add to playlist, go through and listen to that one, add to that one. Um, you can also get an embed code if that's useful to you. And I mentioned earlier that you can download these. So this is the download button. And then again, that'll just show up in your downloads as an MP3 file. You can load that where you want them, you know, where you'd want students to listen to, or you know, if you say, hey, I need you guys to download this to a device, take it home, you know, maybe for those students who don't have um, reliable internet access at home, they can do that while they're at school and then um, play it offline. Um, you can also access transcripts from these, which is fantastic. I know that, you know, for, for some learners, it helps them to have both listening to the audio as well as having a transcript in front of them um, and or have it, you know, printed out for some of your students with special needs. There's, there's a lot of different options um, with those. So here's an example um, of the transcript form. Again, these are going to be written out as a transcript of a, of a show. So you're going to have them um, have it shown and, you know, it'll show who's talking and you know, what's sort of the background, what have you. Um, but these are great. And again, easy to access. You don't need any, um, you know, any other tools or, or apps or anything else like that to listen to any of these. Another expert, I know some of you have probably some strong feelings. <laughs> um, go ahead in the chat. What are your thoughts? Uh, Dave Ramsey, do you love using him? Um, do you avoid it? Uh, you're not sure? Where, where do you stand on Dave Ramsey? So um, he, he tends to elicit some very strong opinions <laughs> um, from some folks. So um, I think this is one of those interesting cases where you know, some people are, are huge fans of Dave Ramsey, and you might want to have students listen to him um, and his take on different um, topics. Um, you know, Dave Ramsey's had a long, long, long time. He's had um, 
a radio show. Um, and so, you know, these are um, recordings from his radio show. Call, listeners call in and ask different questions. Great question. Does he bring up religion a lot? It depends on the episode. So that is something that a lot of folks, you know, are concerned about. And that brings up a great topic. So there's a couple different things that you can do with podcasts, right? You can assign students to listen to a specific t- um, podcast, for example, in which case you're obviously going to listen to it first, right? In other cases, you may ask students to find a podcast and, you know, maybe write something up about it. Um, You know, when you open that, you know, open that Pandora's box, you never know what they're going to find, right? Um, There's actually one of the podcasts um, from Marketplace called This is Uncomfortable. Um, And they, they have some great stuff. It's uncomfortable conversations about money, but almost all of their podcast episodes have that little E for explicit next to it. So I obviously would not recommend that to students. And I left it off of my list um, here for the session for that for specific reason, just because there's content in it and their interviews that are, you know, not safe for work, I guess. So you want to think about, you know, what is it that, that you know, they're going to bring up. Um, but I think also you can have some of these, you know, expert examples. And we talked about this the other day um, on our, our webinar about saving for emergencies, right? Different people have different points of view. So say, for example, you want to you want to highlight one where Dave Ramsey maybe talks about credit cards. He's adamant that people shouldn't use credit cards um, and that they don't need a, a, a credit history um, and be establishing credit history. So, um, you know, that's a very strong opinion that he holds and is in very much in contrast to the opinions of others. So one example of a way to use these in your classrooms would be to have students listen to podcasts that are on the same or very similar topics, but from two or three or more different points of view and say, okay, well, how did those points of view um, vary? You know, what, how compare and contrast where people stood on these different topics. So these are about 40 minutes um, and uh, you know, again, people sort of have some very strong opinions um, a lot of times about Dave Ramsey. Um, he is part of an entire network. So this media network, there's lots of other ones um, within that. They all sometimes take sort of similar approaches on things. But, you know, again, there's there's a lot of different ones. Um, <clears throat> Susie Orman, another um, sometimes polarizing <laughs> uh personal finance personality, if you will. Um, you know, people sort of, again, um, have opinions there. She does these uh, twice a week. Again, where she's talking about specific topics um, and or taking um, and is, uh, answering listeners' questions. So these are about 30 minutes long. And again, um, can sort of take that, you know, point of view. Um, so I think it's interesting <clears throat> on a lot of these, um, if you're using them with students, and for yourself to think about, you know, what's the self-interest of the individual who's providing this information? Do they have a vested interest in it? Um, you know, what are, how are they benefiting from you listening to the, what they have to talk about? And, you know, teaching our students to be strong consumers of this type of information. That, by the way, also allows you, if you use some of these, to tie into some of those ELA standards. Um, for listening in particular and for evaluating um, media and information. So um, if you have an administration, for example, who is strongly um, encouraging you to um, make uh, connections with some of the core content, this is one way that you might think about um, doing that through podcasts. So again, we talked about how much to save in expert advice. You know, that would be a great one to find a couple of different podcasts on the same topic, and have students compare and contrast or have one group of students maybe listen to a podcast from um, from one individual, others from another, others from a third, and then you know talk about the difference or you could do that like as a jigsaw activity if you're familiar with the jigsaw approach. So for example, you might have um, four or five different podcasts that you want students to listen to, maybe from four or five different sources. You would um, divide those students up. They could listen to them all together or on their own devices and then talk about and summarize. And then they could all 
be broken into different groups where one from each of those original groups. So, you know, one person that listened to Dave Ramsey, one person that listened from, to Susie Orman, one person that listened to um, another person, what have you, they all form a new group and they sort of put their different puzzles um, pieces together to form that jigsaw puzzle and they, they compare and contrast in their small groups. So again, lots of different ways that you can operationalize these in your classroom. Another example of uh, ways to use these podcasts are the ones that are take a very what I consider storytelling approach. So I think it's really powerful to have students listen to the stories of individuals and their finances and apply that um, in um, uh, or, and use those as a way to sort of make personal finance personal, right? A lot of us use our own personal stories or stories that we can tell about other people, but these are some podcasts that are sort of in their own words, if you will. And so um, Debt Stories is one of these. Um, so there's 13 episodes so far of this, um, and it comes from You Need a Budget, where they interview individuals and they talk about their, um, their personal experiences. And so um, in some cases, it's it's one person. In some cases, it's a, it's a couple, and they're talking about the as well, like sort of the inner diet, personal dynamics um, that are a part of that. And I think these are fantastic. Um, I would I would use some of these in a classroom in a heartbeat. And again, they just put that sort of personal spin on some of these topics that maybe can seem a little. Um, a little sort of standoffish or you know not as relevant until you sort of see how that plays out in somebody's life. So again, this is another excellent source. They're they're pretty quick, they're 15 minutes um, long and, and really good. Um, this one is really interesting and I, I really like it. There's not very many episodes out yet. Um, but it comes from MPR <laughs> as opposed to NPR. So this one is Minnesota Public Radio. They're about 15 to 25 minutes. There's only eight episodes so far. Um, I'm really hoping that more are going to come out. This one's called Small Change. And um, their tagline is money stories from the neighborhood. I love when they talk about and they introduce themselves or sort of at the introduction of this podcast. They talk about how sometimes there's this notion that individuals with limited income um, maybe aren't as good with money. And they, they talk about how that's not, not so, you know, that individuals with limited incomes are sometimes your best budgeters, for example. And so this is very much focused on individuals with, you know, limited or unstable income. Um, the, the, episode on lending circles. I love that one. Um, there's a community action agency here locally in, in my county, for example, that has worked um, and some other organizations that have worked on um, helping to formalize lending circles, in particular in this area where I live with the Hispanic community. Um, so if you're not familiar with what lending circles are, uh, that's a great one to, to listen to. Um, there's ones talking about money and tradition and dignity. These are just fantastic. I love them. I, th I think they're great insight for educators, um, especially if you maybe do not come from um, a background where you've dealt with um, you know, limited income um, or an unstable income, they can provide some good background advice um, or insight, not advice. But uh, again, there a lot of these have to do with stories and, and sort of just understanding issues maybe through a different lens. They might also be incredibly interesting for students to sort of take on different perspectives and, and learn how um, how individuals um, maybe in different circumstances might um, be challenged with things and or if these are stories that your students can identify with, it might be incredibly powerful for them to hear themselves and, and people who you know um, have the same sort of backgrounds or our circumstances um, um, uh, addressed in, in this way. So these are these are some great ones. Again, this, these aren't going to be the kind of thing that you know a new one comes out every week. That's not how these uh, these work. Um, but <clears throat> you're going to find. I think these are the kinds of things where I would sort of say, okay, I want to just listen to all eight of them, and I'm going to try and listen to you know one a day for the next week or so, um, and then you know decide what I want to do with them from there. So. Um, or just listen to them one after the other when you've got a, a good long drive ahead of you. So that that is another um, excellent one. 
Okay, uh, quiz time. Uh, this is for those of you who were on our last one. Um, I have brought this up before, this case method of teaching. <laughs> um, who can, who remembers what case stands for? C-A-S-E. I am giving you a big hint here in the graphic. What does case stand for in my little world? Good job. There we go. Jim, you came in first. Copy and steal everything. <laughs> so when it comes to a podcast, right, a podcast is no different in a lot of ways than if you read something in a book or if you talk, heard somebody talk about it or if you went into another teacher's classroom and you heard them, um, you know, talking about a subject with a student or you, know, you listen to a speaker somewhere. Um, I sometimes use podcasts simply um, not because, but I end up using podcasts in a way that um, maybe is sometimes unintentional, but has become more intentional over time in that I love finding like these sort of um, analogies that other people use and go, oh, wow, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I could talk about that that way, right? Like I remember talking, or years ago, I heard a, a speaker at a conference talking about diversifying your portfolio Actually, it wasn't a conference she was teaching. She was doing a, a guest presentation um, to an auditorium full of students. And she was talking about that if you're going to have a portfolio that you want to investing, that you want it to be diversified, that you should um, think of it kind of like part planning a party, that you don't want a bunch of people that are going to come to your party and be totally crazy and wild. And you don't want a bunch of people who are just going to come and stand in the corner and be wallflowers that to have, you know, an enjoyable party or an event that you kind of want, like some people who are going to be like the life of the party and some people who will, you know, keep things <clears throat> under control, kind of like investing. You want some maybe things that have a little bit higher risk and potential for more reward, as well as some that are, you know, more stable. So that was sort of this analogy for me that I was like, hey, I like it. Or, you know, one that people use a lot of times is talking about, you know, credit and comparing it to like a, a report card or a GPA, right? So those are the kinds of things that when you hear something explained in a certain way, then maybe you might, um, you know, use something similar. It's not that you're, you know, stealing what they're saying word for word, but you kind of take some of that idea. So one of the things that I like to do is when I hear different things, you know, hear those examples, sort of keep a running list. And podcast is one place to do that. So um, a couple that I like, um, and again, this one really almost all of these could have gone into this category, but I'll just throw in two more here. Um, Money Girl um, is another excellent podcast. This one is, um, uh, can vary a bit in, du in duration, anywhere from less than 15 minutes to a little bit more. Um, if I don't, if I'm not mistaken, she's up to like 670 or something like that um, of these podcasts that she's done. So she has them on just about any and every topic that, that you can um, imagine. And um, a lot of times she'll use an analogy or use an example that maybe you haven't heard of or, or thought of before. So um, a, a good one, you know, maybe even like, hey, I'm going to teach this topic. Sometimes I think, you know, maybe the last time I taught it, you know, it was a little dry or I could, you know, stand to like, you know, spice it up a little bit, you know, you can listen to one of these and, and think about how somebody else approaches it or listening to a couple different ones and think about, oh, well, that's kind of an interesting way to, to approach that topic. So again, just a different way to think about how um, you can take something that you've listened to and apply it. Um, this one is a different one <clears throat> in that it is aimed at younger students and, um, and their families and it's called um, Million Bazillion. It's actually sponsored um, in part by, um, Tim Ranzetta's uh, Family Foundation, the, the head of Next Gen Personal Finance. They've got some, some great episodes um, and, and some great kinds of things. I love um, in his one on saving money, that saving money is really hard one. Um, they asked the question of kids, um, if you could build a vault to protect your money, what would it have? <laughs> and I was like, that's a great question to ask young kids, right? And they recorded kids answering that question, you know, like it would have laser sensors and it would have this and it would have that. And I was just like, what a great, you know, cool um, question to ask. So that's totally something that you could copy and, you know, use and, and ask students, um, especially if you have some, some younger students. So again, another example of a great um, of a great podcast. Another um, <clears throat> way to use podcasts, and I think this is one that I think a lot of um, you as educators may feel 
like you'd want to explore um, in particular is to create some what I would call sort of evergreen assignments. So in other words, you listen to a podcast and you think, um, wow, this did a really good job of explaining this topic. I think this is something that I would like for my students to listen to and maybe answer some questions as they go through it and um, you know, use that as a way to explore a topic, right? So in doing that, you're going to find, you know, some great, great quality um, podcast, you know, something that you really think is good, something that maybe isn't too long or, you know, what have you, you think it, it sort of, you know, fits the Goldilocks rule. Um, and then, you know, you create an assignment. So one example, um, and I've linked to this one, I just took one of those ones that from Life Kit and um, did an example of like some questions that students could a uh, answer while they are, um, while they're listening and then some other ones for afterwards as a follow-up. So, you know, just like you would if maybe you were having students watch a video or watch a movie in class or, you know, you sign something like that, you can um, do something very similar, you know, just as a, as a form of, you know, formative assessment, um, keep them engaged, make sure that they're paying attention um, and that, you know, give something to grade as well if that's a, um, something that's important to you. So this is just an example. This is linked in the handouts with a um, Google Doc that you can take and copy this, case it all you want. Um, some others that are out there, um, Planet Money, uh, we talked about earlier, Econ Lowdown comes from the St. Louis, um, or the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, and is a great resource. So Econ Lowdown, um, to be able to access these resources, you need to sign in and or you need to create a teacher account and sign in. And once you do, then you can assign these resources to um, your students. And so, um, and or you can can use them sort of a little bit, um, you can use them also with, without them. But basically what they did is they took these, uh, these existing podcasts from Planet Money and they edited them, down, edited them down to a shorter duration, made them available through Econ Lowdown, which by the way, now allows for like a Google sign-on for students and can integrate with Canvas. I'm not entirely sure about exactly how each of those things work, but if those are interesting to you, I would pursue it. Um, so anyhow, students listen to this, um, these clips and then they can answer some questions. You can choose to have the, um, the students um, do the questions and take the quiz online and find out how they did because it'll grade it and be part of that, that system. Or you can um, copy those if you wanted to in your own document and use them. Um, sort of as, a, as an assessment afterwards. So let me just give you, this is another example of those that sort of case moment. Um, so we're gonna listen in on this one um, for just a couple minutes. And if you don't mind, um, if you can't hear in a moment, let me know in the chat. Lawmakers have spent a lot of time lately debating what to do about the country's growing deficit. In doing so, they're wrestling with a question that goes back to the beginning of the Republic what should the government spend its money on? Well, fear not, there is actually consensus among most economists on at least two things they say governments should pay for, lighthouses and probably autopsies. David Kestenbaum of our Planet Money team reports. Lighthouses are the classic example of what economists call a public good. Public good is something that we all need that will make our lives better, but that the market will not and cannot provide. This is Charlie Whelan. He teaches public policy at the University of Chicago. Think about lighthouses, he says. If the government doesn't build lighthouses, where would the money come from? Sure, someone could go around to ship's captains and say, hey, we're going to build a lighthouse. Want to contribute? But people will just say, uh, no thanks. I don't need one. I'm a good sailor. And you're just going to use our lighthouse without paying for it because we can't do it. You know, we can't say close your eyes when you sail past this rocky <laughs> point. With every other good, if you don't pay for it, if you don't buy the sneakers at Walmart, you just don't get to walk with them out of the store. And if you do, we'll arrest you. We can't do that for a lighthouse. That seems like a sound argument, but we did some checking anyway. Okay, Jeff, give us some um, name and credentials. Jeff Gales, U.S. Lighthouse Society Executive Director. Jeff Gale says this is basically right. There were some privately built lighthouses. Then, in 1789, the government set up what would become the U.S. Lighthouse Service. Prior to the establishment of the U.S. Lighthouse Service, 
I mean, you didn't have lighthouses on rocky shoals or in the middle of the ocean. I mean, those are places where it was really expensive to build. So general agreement on lighthouses. Also, most economists would agree it makes sense for governments to pay for a military, since that won't arise on its own. Ditto with a court system. Charlie Whelan says some unexpected things also count as public goods, like autopsies. The Journal of the American Medical Association has been arguing for 15 years at least that there's a public health problem because we're not doing enough autopsies. The autopsy rate has plummeted from 40-some percent down to, I think, single digits. If we had more autopsies, we'd know more about how people die. So collectively, we all want them. And yet, no individual really has an incentive to pay for one. They don't see the benefit. There's none for the person being autopsy. It's a little late for that. The family thinks, yuck, autopsy, which leaves the doctor. But think about it from the doctor's perspective. Best case, what you find in the autopsy confirms the diagnosis. Then, yes, I was right. This turns out it was this kind of cancer and so on. It turns out to be extremely common, much more than you would think, that there were either undiagnosed conditions, misdiagnosed conditions. So this person, best case he was right, worst case he's going to be looking at malpractice. So the person who is in the best position to encourage autopsy often will not. So you'd argue this is basically a lighthouse. This is a lighthouse. Charlie Whelan did find one private company that does autopsies, so we called 1-800-AUTOPSY. We got Videl Herrera, the founder. The American people are our customers. Anytime a death occurs, if they don't have anybody do an autopsy, they can call it 1-800-AUTOPSY and we will help them. But even Herrera agrees the government should be paying for autopsies. So there. We now have the beginning of an economist-approved list of things the government should be doing. Autopsies, Lighthouses, courts, defense. But then Whelan says we get to the hard questions. How much for defense? What about health care, education? Those don't meet the strict definitions of public goods, but most governments end up getting involved with them anyway. David Kestenbaum, NPR News. So... Lighthouses and autopsies. I have talked about public goods, um, wrote lessons on public goods. I always talk about public goods when I talk about taxes, because I don't think that we should talk about and teach students about taxes without talking about why we pay taxes. And, you know, yes, we can, you know, begrudge how much maybe is being taken from our paycheck or how much we spend um, in taxes when we um, buy a home or a car or fill up our uh, tank with gas or, you know, buy something at the store, uh, it's always important to, you know, sort of offset that with a little bit of a lesson on why, you know, reminding folks why we pay taxes and the benefits that we derive. And so um, this will be one of those examples that since hearing that, I'm like, oh, wow, autopsies and uh, and lighthouses never made my list. <laughs> the military, yes. Public schools, yes. Uh, the roads that we drive on, the people that um, inspect our beef to make sure that it's safe um, to eat. All of those I've used as examples. I've never once used autopsies or lighthouses. So again, an example of where you might choose to use this as an evergreen assignment um, with econ lowdown, um, or you might just file that one away and say, hey, Next time I teach about public goods or I talk about taxes and I use examples of things that um, taxes pay for, you know, I've got some new ones um, to throw in as examples. So, again, these are able to be um, reviewed when you when you go in and, and go to uh, the the website um, and log into Econ um, Lowdown. You can preview these and you can see all the questions um, that your students would be asked if they were doing this, here's an example. Why does the government pay for public goods like lighthouses and autopsies? So these are just multiple choice questions that show that students have um, have listened to them. And again, you can use them in econ lowdown or, or use them um, separately in your own uh, assessment. Another resource, um, NextGen Personal Finance, um, they have their own podcast, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit, but they also started producing um, resources called Podcasts in the Classroom. And in most cases, they've taken versions or taken um, previous podcasts that they have recorded and edited those down um, and are using those um, as well as podcasts from other sources. So um, here are some examples of the ones that they have available. I believe they're putting these out every two weeks. 
So if you um, subscribe to their blog or follow them on a regular basis, basis or here's the link um, where you can find all of these and um, link to each of these, um, they are great. They come with um, a Google form. So you're um, required to make a copy of this when you go into it. And um, here are some examples of three experts um, or three excerpts of NGPF podcasts with people that they've talked to. So Paul Merriman, author of We're Talking Millions on uh, market timing versus dollar cost averaging. Uh, and this one on the idea of just keep buying, this one on the psychology of money and emotions. Um, taking emotions out of investing. So in this case, they you know, suggest that you listen to one of them. And then there are questions that have to be answered. So again, you can use this in the Google Form version, copy that and use it exactly as is or make it your own assignment. Um, again, um, you know, do with it as, as you see fit. So here's another one. This one is on credit scores. Okay, so here are some people that have been interviewed on the NGPF podcast. Um, these are ones then that have been um, uh, given ex you know, specific examples um, to where you would go and, um, um, and the duration of each of these ex excerpts. So, you know, under three minutes basically for each of these. So students would listen to one of these or you could have them listen to all three and compare again, listening to different people's perspectives, different ways that you can, um, can use them. And again, follow up um, questions with um, open-ended open answers so that you can make sure students have, um, have listened to this and, and sort of engaged with the content. So speaking of NGPF, it's a great source of professional development. Um, so I would say that any of these that you listen to for your own self edification to improve your content knowledge, maybe to stay current um, with, you know, with current events, um, or to use and, and listen for ways to, to talk about different topics, all of those could be considered a form of professional development. Maybe if you have a goal of something that you're trying to do um, that you're writing for yourself with your administration and maybe talking about ways that you might um, improve yourself, maybe um, you can incorporate uh, some of these podcasts into it. Um, the one that was just mentioned there a minute ago was the Next Gen Personal Finance. And these podcasts are, um, are done in a variety of different ways. They have ones that are um, interviewing teachers. Um, they have ones that are done by teachers um, on different topics where they you know, talk about how they're doing things in the classroom. And in some of the cases, these are experts that Tim Ranzetta is interviewing, you know, authors with a new book, what have you. So these really run the gamut in terms of the topics and the links, but they're all fantastic um, and ones that, that might be of interest. And they, um, they keep a Google spreadsheet of all the different topics and what have you. So um, you could, you know, even print that out and, you know, check them off after you list a, li um, listen to them, what have you. So, um, and on their blog for each of the podcasts, a lot of times there's additional like links um, and resources, sometimes tying to an assignment from NGPF or, or a, um, one of their financial Fridays or their questions of the day or a data crunch or what have you. So um, definitely a great place to go and, and find some additional information. One of the things that I really love about their, um, their podcast is they include sort of these timestamps. So if you want to go back and listen to something or, you know, find something specific, you can fast forward or wherever um, to those. So again, these are, you know, these are fantastic. Um, and then last but not least, you might use these as like an anytime activity. So our first webinar um, of this series a couple of weeks ago, we talked about, you know, activities that you can kind of just file away and use anytime. And this would be an example of those anytime activities. So for example, have students, um, you know, listen and summarize, um, listen to and summarize a, a podcast. You know, so this is a type of an activity that could very, very easily just be made um, you know, very generic. Maybe you need an emergency sub plan um, and you have students listen to something in class and summarize it and, and share information or present to each other in a group or what have you. 
um, like what we talked about earlier, having um, different points of view on the same topic and comparing and contrasting. If they listen to more than one, you know, which one did they agree with more? Did they prefer somebody's approach to explaining something? Um, you know, it doesn't always have to be a different opinion, but just a way of sharing the same type of information. Um, you know, did they have a style or a, a way that something was explained and prefer that um, more than another? Um, these are some um, examples. There's lots of stuff out there, like on Teachers Pay Teachers, for example. This is one that's um, kind of similar, that sort of notion of a anytime assignment. This comes from a business ed um, educator um, called Pick a Podcast. So this is a PDF where you know, they can um, locate and find some of these um, different ones and, um, and use those. Um, it's free. You just need to log into um, Teachers Pay Teachers and you can download this one or this podcast preview, which is um, available in a couple of different formats. It's available as like a, P as a PDF or as a PowerPoint slide um, that can be typed on to fill these in. So again, different ways that you can um, use these. Um, another option is to have students make a podcast, right? So what a great creative assignment. You may not have all of the tools to have students actually record them or have them sound like, you know, great quality they're going to put out on, you know, Apple podcasts. But even just writing out the script or planning what you would say um, is another great way to have students um, really authentically engage in, you know, sharing information or showing that they um, really learned about a topic or have researched a topic. There's a great resource called the NPR Student Podcast Challenge, if you've never heard of it. It's been out, I think, since 2018. And this is for students in grades 5 through 12. They record themselves doing a podcast. It can be um, anywhere between three to eight minutes. And the educator uploads it, or a parent can upload it. Um, and there are prizes. One of the things that I love about it, even if the, if the contest is of no interest to you, they have a lot of really great um, resources for educators. Things like, you know, doing a lesson on just, you know, what is a podcast, um, how to, if you're going to, if you're going to do um, a podcast, um, a lesson on, um, for students on choosing a topic, planning the story, brainstorming what sounds they might have, um, recording practice, interview practice, and a checklist for field recording. And then this is the version for students. So um, again, these are a great resource for you to use um, in your classroom. And I love this little list of just getting some ideas together um, and some recommendations of ways to maybe think about something. So um, you know, what do you want to change about the world? It's a big change that students today will make in the future. You know, so how would you apply that to money, right? Like, you know, how would you change the way that we pay for things or the way that we earn our money or, you know, whatever that might be um, or investing, you know, what's a big change that students today might make in the future for that? Um, so lots of great things. So when it comes to listening to these, one thing that I just wanted to um, have as a caveat, um, and some of these, some of these you'll, we talked about a little bit when we talked about that, um, the Snacks Daily is, um, uh, was acquired by Robinhood. But a lot of these have sponsors, okay, or, you know, this episode is brought to you by or, you know, let's listen to this ad from, right? So I don't think um, you necessarily want to avoid things that have sponsors. I mean, it's just like watching, you know, a, a good old fashioned television show live with commercials, right? You know, ads are all around us. But, you know, let's think about it critically. Who are the sponsors? Does that sponsor's business align with the topic of the podcast? Was a product or service advertised during the podcast? What's the relationship and is it disclosed between the podcaster and, you know, the, the producer or what have you? Um, and does somebody have a financial motive in getting you to listen to this and, and maybe buy something else? You know, so especially if there's, you know, a book or, you know, some other good or, or service that's being provided, are they trying to sell you a certain, um, get you to buy an investment? So like that Snacks Daily that we talked about. Um, if any of the stocks or the companies that are mentioned, if either of the two hosts um, happens to own that, they mention and disclose that at the end of the um, of the podcast. So how does that make you feel? Like if they talked about Nike, for example, and one of the pod, um, one of the the um, hosts owns Nike stock, you know, 
what is that, um, how does that influence your, the way that you, the, what you take away from that, that podcast, for example. So I think it's a great teachable moment. Um, I wouldn't be concerned um, unless it's glaring or something that you're really concerned about. But, you know, again, something to consider when you're um, using these with students. Um, again, lots of different places that you can get your podcasts. These are some of the most, um, I, I would say, popular, if you will. So Apple Podcasts, which you can have the, the app on um, a device such as um, a, a MacBook or an iPad or an iPhone, um, and you can subscribe to them. Um, Google Podcasts, you can get to from any browser and listen. Spotify, you can do from any browser or from the app. So lots of different ways that you can access these, um, you know, at, at no cost. Um, so um, here's an example of what um, Apple Podcast looks like. So it's a, um, an application if you're on a, a MacBook or um, an app on an iPhone or um, an iPad. Uh, this is what Google Podcasts looks like. So I just did a search on Google Podcasts for um, personal finance. And these are some of the ones that came up. Um, so, you know, lots of different examples, and you can, again, um, search in, in lots of different ways. Here's an example. Um, this is part of my um, podcast playlist um, or podcast list of podcasts on um, Spotify. Um, and I think I mentioned earlier, I tend to um, listen to these um, in particular, like at home sometimes. So I might listen to these on the echo that's in our kitchen. So I'll listen to them while I'm um, making dinner um, and have it play there as opposed to just off of my device. Um, and so again, uh, lots of ways to, to listen to these. Um, I saw an educator post in um, a Facebook group a while ago about um, uh, the importance of having allowing students to multitask. So if you play one of these in class and your students, you're asking your students to listen for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. If you think about if you were asked to listen to something for that period of time and just focus on it, chances are good you'd probably want to multitask. And so one of the things that she said is that she prints out, um, she downloads PDFs of coloring pages and has students color them in and the kids love doing that. Um, and I was like, how, how great, you know, like uh, to me, that's the sort of thing that I would totally get into while listening and I can um, uh, sort of, you know, continue to, to be mindful of what's, um, what's being talked about. So um, on the handout, I gave you some places where you can um, grab different things to, to print and or some apps that are similar or have students play like sort of a mindless game. Um, you know, you don't want them obviously doing homework for another class. You want them to still be able to listen to the content, um, but you know, things that are kind of quick and easy, um, you know, they can, they can multitask because really that's where all of us are gonna be. Um, so here are still more. Again, I could have listed you know, way more podcasts in this than we have time for, but um, all of these are also linked in the handout. So I'd encourage you to go and um, explore those. I'm curious if anybody has a podcast that you've ever listened to um, that maybe I didn't mention, um, or you have one that I did mention, and you just want to give a shout out to it over in the comments, feel free. Um, I'm always game for listening to, to one more. Um, again, for me, a lot of times it's trying to pick and choose um, and decide how I want to use my, my, my time. Um, and you know, some of the some of the folks just resonate with me more um, than others. So again, uh, listen to, to a couple of different ones and see what see what uh, what sticks, if you will. So um, think about how you can use these ideas and strategies and, and go forward with them. Um, as we talked about in the past, um, we do have a Facebook group. We are still looking for a few additional moderators for that um, to try and really get things going and um, promote use of that group. So if you're interested, please shoot me an email and let me know. Um, we have three more webinars in our series coming up, um, Investing in Tumultuous Times, What's New in Financial Education, really hopeful that our new national standards for personal finance will be released at that point, and then May 6th um, on the resource called Million Stories, which I think would be new to quite a few folks. So if you haven't signed up for those, please do. Last but not least, thanks so much for coming.